Welcome to the intro lecture of the 1920s. Uh, we're going to take a look at America after the war. America is going to seek post-war normality and isolation. We want things to return back to the way they were before World War One, And we're going to start to isolate ourselves from the rest of the world. So some post-war trends. All right, the effect of peace on the public. The war leaves Americans exhausted, working long hours in factories, um, war constantly on your mind, uh, running a victory garden for vegetables, to grow your own vegetables, rationing of food that's going on. It's going to leave a lot of Americans exhausted and just wanting to distance themselves from the rest of the world. The economy is also adjusting. We have a cost of, the cost of living doubles. So now you have to pay double the price for things, for housing, for food, for transportation, everything. All right. Not to mention that farm and factory orders are down. All right. Soldiers who come back, they're going to take jobs from women and minorities who filled their jobs when they left to go off to war. Um, this is going to be uh, hurtful to minorities, especially African Americans, who came from the south to the north during the Great Migration. Factory and <clears throat> farmers, they're gonna the their work is gonna suffer because during the war, farmers were producing a ton of food and grain for the war effort. At first, we were sending it to the Allies, then we're using it ourselves as we're over there in the war. All right, after the war there's not as big of a need and so these farmers have a surplus of food that they have to sell really cheap in order to try and make a profit and many of them are not they're gonna to start to go poor in the 1920s extremely poor start losing their houses factory workers as well they're gonna start losing their jobs because while the war is going on we're, we're making ammunitions tanks planes uh... anything to deal with the war effort the factories are turned solely into uh... Thing, or a place where war goods were made and now that the war is over those needs for all those materials aren't needed and so their orders are going to go down and less workers are going to be needed because there's not as much work and they're going to start to lose their jobs and then we roll into a feeling of nativism all right and that's a prejudice against foreign-born people all right anybody born outside of the United States so if they're immigrants living here in America we're going to start to really have this hatred towards them and then we're going to enter into an area of isolationism and that's pulling away from the world's affair we want to isolate ourselves from the rest of the world we don't want to get dragged into the world's affairs and enter into a gigantic war again in fact we get so hung up on this stay away from the rest of the world that we never join the league of nations that was president our president president woodrow wilson's idea this League of Nations where we can talk and work things out without going to war. That was our idea, yet we never join. That's crazy. All right, and then you have the Russian Bolsheviks Revolution. I told you guys that Russia is going to leave the war in 1917, all right? And that's because they enter into a civil war with each other, and this communist group of people are going to take over the country. Now America starts to fear that these communists from that area of the world are going to try and take over America. And we're going to have this strong, crazy fear towards them. And what we call this fear is the Red Scare. Okay, back on the last photo, I could show you, the color representation for communism is red. All right, you can see this man with the red flag, red flag in the political cartoon. And so we call it the Red Scare, the scare that communists are going to come to America and try and take it over. And we're going to start to see a lot of strikes uh, in the country during the 1920s. And we're going to start to associate that with the Russian or the Bolsheviks revolution in Russia. And we're going to start to look at these worker unions, okay, um, as an attempt to take over America and change America and turn it into a communist country. And so there's going to be a lot of hatred towards uh, worker unions at the time as we view them as communists. I'll cover this in class, the difference between communism and democracy. Alright, so communism and the Red Scare. <clears throat> what communism in a small nutshell is it's an economic and political system with a single party government think about 
one single group of people with one dictator telling everybody what to do all right and they control the economy in a way that nobody has private property everything is for the common good for people so that everybody's on the same le playing field if you owned a factory and made a lot of money well guess what that now belongs to the government and you have no say about that and all your money and profits are now distribute distributed to everybody else so everybody's on the same playing field in 1919 the communists are going to be successful in Russia so only after two years of civil war the communists are going to take over Russia and this is now the Soviet Union's new flag they have the hammer for industrial workers and the sickle for uh, for for farming and agriculture and then we're gonna start to see a rise of a US Communist Party people who join a party and want to be put into power of the government so that they can enact communism in America and now this is gonna start a lot of fear because it used to be an issue over there, all right? That was a problem over there. Well, now there's Americans believing in a communist party, all right? And we actually have people joining it, mostly industrial workers who are sick of working for low wages to make one man really rich. Why does that man get to be really rich and I get to be really poor? I want us both on the same level uh, of play. And so you're going to start to see uh, people start to get really scared about that. And these groups are going to start to take actions. They're going to be mailing bombs to the government and to businesses, trying to cause this chaos and this scare, okay, and this takeover. It's going to be really small. They're not going to be successful, but it's still going to cause a lot of fear. And so much fear that uh, the government's going to get involved. Attorney General A. Mitchell Palmer um, he's going to start taking action against these communists in what we call the Palmer Raids. He's going to team up with the head of the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover. They're going to hunt down communists, socialists, and anarchists. All these people who believe in different ideals that are complete opposite of America and the democracy that we represent. And so they're going to start raiding homes and groups of people. And if you're foreign born and part of these groups, you'd be sent back to your home country. All right. What an anarchist is, is a, they're groups of people that oppose any form of government. Nobody should be able to tell you what to do. Government isn't needed. They kind of believe in this uh, kind of chaos moment, if you will. What these Palmer raids do is it tramples your civil rights. You have a right to freedom of speech, right? You have the right to assemble or gather in an area. You have a right to petition your grievances to uh, the government. And so it's going to trample all over those. Just because you believe that communism is better than democracy doesn't mean that you should get raided, arrested, and jailed and fined for it, okay? And these raids are really very unsuccessful at finding evidence of a conspiracy to take over the government or a conspiracy of treason against the United States government. And it's going to really paint a uh, black eye picture for uh, Palmer. This communist fear, this hatred towards anarchists and hatred towards immigrants is really going to take America over so strongly that we look at immigrants in a negative way and start to blame them for things. All right, um, so the Red Scare is going to feed into this fear of foreigners. All right, we think that these foreigners coming over are trying to spread communism. And it's going to lead to the arrest of two Italian immigrants, uh, last name Sacco and Vanzetti. All right, in 1920, you have these two guys, they're Italian immigrants, they're outspoken anarchists, well-known, well-documented that they're anarchists, all right? They're going to get blamed for a robbery and murder. The problem with the case is all the witness details are very vague. A black car. Well, guess what? All cars made back then were colored black. So that could be any car on the streets. All right, Italian immigrants. Well, I'm pretty sure there's more than just two Italian immigrants. It could have been any of the Italian immigrants in the area, especially if it was an Italian uh, neighborhood. Could have been anybody, okay? Um, and so the trial doesn't really prove their guilt. The evidence stacked against them is very vague and uh, really low on evidence. 
and yet they're going to still be found guilty because of America's fear and panic towards immigrants and foreigners, all right? And especially of a communist takeover. But some people actually see through the the fact that the trial had weak evidence and you're going to start to see wide protest in the US and abroad um about the guilty verdict of Sacco and Vanzetti. In fact, they're going to be sentenced to death and executed in 1927. All right, so this is Sacco and Vanzetti here. You can see some of the protests, Save Sacco and Vanzetti. You can see their funeral here. Um, a lot of people lined up. These aren't just all anarchists or communists um, mourning these people. These are people realizing they got dealt the raw deal. All right, and then we have an extreme fear of foreigners and it's going to influence a breed of hatred and we'll get there all right so we have anti-immigrant attitudes we have these nativists all right there's fewer unskilled jobs available in america because the demand for things and goods are down so less jobs when not as many orders are in well then we need fewer immigrants to fill those jobs and if immigrants are taking those jobs and they're taking jobs away from Americans and we can't have that because we need to serve America first all right and the fact that many Americans think that immigrants are communists all right we think that they're only coming over to take over our country and turn it into a communist state and make it completely opposite of what America is and stands for this hatred towards these groups is going to bring about a huge rise in the Ku Klux Klan, all right. Uh, the Ku Klux Klan, their hatred at the time, they're considered a home terrorist group, all right. They oppose blacks, Catholics, Jews, immigrants, unions, and saloons. The hatred towards immigrants and foreign-born people is so high in America that in 1924, the KKK's membership grows to 4.5 million people. That's crazy. 4.5 million people spewing all sorts of hatred out of their mouths towards all, all sorts of different groups and immigrants being one of their main targets. All right. In fact, the Klan becomes so powerful that they control many states' politics. And I'm saying this in the fact that if you were not associated or claimed to be part of the Ku Klux Klan, you could not get elected to a political office in the South. That's crazy. If a political person tried to run for president or run for Congress or for governor now and they openly admitted to being part of the Ku Klux Klan, they were no way they're going to get elected today. But back then, in the South especially, you had to be associated with the Klan in order to get elected. That's crazy. But they're also a very violent group, okay? And the more violent that they become, the more people dislike them and they're going to start to lose their power. And people are not going to like the Ku Klux Klan anymore. But they have strong numbers, okay? And I'll cover these uh, photos in class and tell you a little bit about them. This hatred towards immigrants is going to cause the United States to enact what we call the quota system. It sets a maximum number of immigrants who can enter the United States from each country in the world. All right? In 1924, European arrivals to America... All right, is going to be cut to 2% of the number of those type of immigrants in 1890. So, for example, if in 1890 we had 1 million Germans come over to America, 2% of 1 million is 20,000. So, starting in 1924, 2% 2 of however many immigrants from a certain country in 1890 is how much would come over. All right, and then you start to see this discrimination against Southern and Eastern Europeans, and that's because that's where we see a lot of uprising, a lot of striking, and a lot of attempted communist takeovers is in Southern and Eastern Europe. So we're really going to start to discriminate and hold back those that want to come to America if they're from a Southern or Eastern European country. And this concludes the lecture. Thank you.